I grew up in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. And you know, Jackson Hole is noted for big mule deer. And I hunted them for over 40 years. Also, I videoed for my father, and I videoed some big bucks. But over the years, there's been several mule deer that kind of stick out in my mind. And one of them that I filmed for four consecutive years here, oh, several years ago, was one that they called Popeye. Now what makes this mule deer so special is that this buck was found on public land. In other words, he was hunted in Wyoming in a general area in hunting season and then he would come in the winter onto the winter range which was also on public land. Over the years, a friend of mine, Eddie Bull, had picked up his antlers. And not just one set, but many sets. You know, in my book, uh, High Country Mule Deer, I uh, have a whole section on Popeye. I have photos of each year. In fact, we even took and scored each set of antlers. It's very interesting. His last year, Popeye got to be over 40 inches in his outside spread, which is really phenomenal. And that's probably one of the reasons why people really like to look at this deer. Number one, he was hunted and was never taken. Number two is that he was such a widespread mule deer. Now, I think, well, let's go and talk to Eddie here. I did an interview with him many years ago showing the buck's antlers. And let's go to that interview, and Eddie will tell us a little bit about the buck, and we'll get firsthand to look at those uh, really big set of sheds of Popeyes. I'm out here in western Wyoming with uh, Eddie Bull. A lot of times people uh, here lately are starting to pick up shed antlers and it's becoming a very popular uh, pastime here out west as well as back east. Uh, now Eddie here, he, uh, he, he does a lot of photography. He's a real good uh, still cameraman. Plus, he loves to pick up uh, some of these big old bucks antlers. The thing about Eddie is that he watches these big deer and can kind of tell when they're going to drop their antlers and he's picked up some really good big old uh, non-typical mule deer. Eddie, kind of tell me about this buck here. He's got quite a bit of character and why don't you give us a little background on him. Okay, this buck, uh, I first heard about him last year from a couple of friends of mine and we looked for him for about a week before I finally got to see him myself. And, this was his right side antler from last year. As you can see, he picked up quite a bit in mass and in non-typical points. What, now, uh, uh, this big old buck here, how old do you think he is? Well, another friend of mine's picked up his right side from the year before this one. So I figured then he was probably about three or four years old. So this year he would have been four or five, and then this year he's probably five or six. And according to Val Geist, they don't reach their maximum size till they're about eight years old. Right. Now you have a degree in biology? Yes, okay. yes, wildlife biology. That also helps you when you're out there, you get a little more uh, knowledge on what's happening and uh, really probably helps you in your photography work. Yeah, especially after reading Val Geist's book, he went over behavior quite a bit and that helped a lot. We call this buck Popeye. Uh, we named him that because your eyes pop out when you look at him. If you look at this buck, he's 37 inches wide right here. This is his 94 year. And like I was saying before, he comes in on the winter range. This is all public land. He is hunted in a public area that's a general season. This is his next year set. Now when you look at him, the reason we call him Popeye is that he looks wider from the front than the back. And that's because he's really got a good wide inside spread. His inside spread is over 29 inches. Just a good big super trophy mule deer. And you know there's still bucks like this out, out here. In the Eastman's Journal, every issue, we show stories of hunters like yourself that have taken quality mule deer. Maybe not quite as big as Popeye, but almost. We have some guys that have taken, and gals, some big trophy mule deer. And that's what the Eastman's Journal is about. You and I in our hunts for good quality animals. 
You know, Popeye come year after year to, to the same winter grounds. In fact, he'd come to the same spot in winter year after year. I think what happened is when he was a little fawn, his mother would come in to this particular area and it was drained into him. That's where he needed to winter. And really what the deal was, he could have hit other winter ranges that were closer because I knew where he would summer. And from where he summered to where he wintered, he'd have to go over two major mountain ranges and one major river. That was over 70 air miles that Popeye would have to travel to get from his summer to his winter range. And he isn't the only one. There's a lot of mule deer out west here that have to migrate up to 70 miles, sometimes over the Continental Divide, to get to the winter ranges. So mule deer have a real difficult time sometimes getting from their summer to the winter range. They're not like whitetail that just live in a particular area. So sometimes it gets really interesting trying to find a trophy mule deer during the summer and fall from when you've seen him on the winter range. But Popeye is, as you can see, is a real character. He comes, like I said, every year to the same spot. Coming up, we're going to go out in the winter range and we're going to see Popeye for three years and we're going to talk about this huge 40 inch bucks antlers. We're going to show you how he developed in a three year period. You don't want to miss this. You know, Eddie Bull filmed Popeye in 1994 and this is the footage. You notice here Popeye has uh, not uh, rubbed off all his velvet. He never does. I had a buddy of mine film him in 96 just before the rut and he still had his velvet on. This is Popeye 95. He's 37 inches wide. He has a 29 inch main beam. His inside spread is 29 inches and those back tangs are 21 inches. This is Popeye in 96 on the summer range up in the high country at 10,000 feet. This is what he looked like when he was in the velvet. This year he sported a little more non-typical points. The year before his mainframe was over 220 this year, right here, his mainframe is like 217, but he has a lot more non-typical points. Now let's look at him the last year he come on the winter range. He winter killed this winter, but you can see right here, he's got over a 41 inch outside spread. Believe it or not, his mainframe went down to 217, but his non-typical gross score was 256. How do I know that? Eddie Bow has got four sets of these dropped antlers and we're able to score them. Okay, this guy, I first saw him in November during the rut. <clears throat> and that was a good 17 airline miles from where I picked up his antlers at. And he comes down, he winters along this one drainage. And I saw him again this year, but I wasn't able to get any footage of him. So these big guys there, they're hard to find, huh? During the hunting season, yeah. This is the hunting season in Wyoming, and this is on public land. Now, this buck here has uh, come down. He's about a, a high 170, low 180 type mule deer, and it's during hunting season. We have a special permit. Now, I want to let you know that what happens here is he's running up here to look at a doe. She's an estrus, and there's another buck up here, and that other buck is between him and this doe. Now, look at him here. He looks like he just looks like a blowfish. He just gets stiff-legged here. He pins his ears back and watch him blow up his chest here. He just gets almost a third bigger. He struts along here. He says, hey man, I'm bad. Look at me. I'm bad. What he's trying to do is intimidate this buck that you're going to see show up here. Now, a lot of people think if the mule deer have the largest antlers, he's going to win the fight. And that's not necessarily true. And in this case, it isn't. I want you to watch what happens here. This other buck that's going to come in on the right here is a younger deer. He's probably only four years old. He probably is 50 pounds lighter than the buck on the left, but his antlers are wider. They're not necessarily bigger, but they're wider. Now let's watch this, what happens with these two bucks as one keeps the other away from his doe. Look at the one on the right, it says, don't you come any closer. Now watch what he does right here. Now watch the guy, oh, buck on the right, right here. Now watch him. Watch this again. The buck on the left is going to just move a little bit. Our old buck, he's just going to move. Now watch the buck on the right, what he does here. He's spitting at him. 
He's actually spitting at our buck saying, don't you come near my doe. Well, our big old buck here, he's, he's been down this trail before. He just said, I'll just circle right around this buck. And so that's what he's doing. Now watch the younger buck follow him. And right here, the younger buck's thinking, hey, I got him on the move. He's running away from me. I've got him. I'm, he's, he's leaving. Right here, the light goes off in his head. And he goes, well, wait a minute. He's between me and my doe. Now watch what he does. He starts running here. He says, hey, come back here. Well, our old buck, he's had enough of this. He spins around right here, and the two of them get it on right here. Now watch what happens when the two of them get together. Go right here, and he gores him right there. See how he gores him in the shoulder? Ouch, ouch, ooh. Because his antlers were wider, he was able to gore him. Now watch our younger buck go, man, I got my head hurts from doing that. Ouch, ouch, ouch. And the old buck, he looks at me like, Eastman, you didn't see that, did you? You didn't see me get whipped. And then he spins around here and says, man, I'd sure like to get up there and get friendly with that girl there, but I don't want to go through this again. Out on the winter range, I come up on another buck, and you noticed here he's got his eye put out fighting. He was gored in the stomach. I missed the fight. I am 70 feet away. He doesn't see me because he can't see me. Let me uh, call right here. <laughs> Notice here, he's, his one eye has been punched out. And uh, when I come up on him, if I'd come up five minutes earlier, I would got him fighting a buck. And the buck that whipped him was only like a 150 deer. Now, this is a public land buck that's found in the high country. Let's look at him the next year. He did make it through the winter. This is what he looked like the next year. He blew an antler off. You notice here he has his kind of his cheater. But you don't want to know something? That year right there was the last year. Uh, two weeks later, he died uh, winter killed. Uh, but he was able to pass his genes on. And I guarantee you, three years later, you'll find a buck out there that will just look exactly like him. They pass their genes and their antler genes on year after year. Look at this big old buck. Isn't he something? A good public land trophy mule deer. Uh, this buck I filmed uh, on the winter range that winter too, and we call him corkscrew. Look at that. He's got double drops. He's got what I call a 190 mainframe. He's uh, 30 inches wide. When he turns here, you'll see he's got a 6-inch cheater hanging off one side of his rack. But what makes this buck so unique is he's got those two double drops and the one corkscrews down, and I call him corkscrew. You know, he came back on the winter range last year, and he never had those double drops. He did have that long cheater, but he just eliminated those drops, which is too bad. This is also another public land buck that's found and is hunted on public lands. This is during December, and these bucks are down rutting, uh, down on their winter range. Just a real nice trophy mule deer. Oh, remember this sequence I told you? And I want you to watch this buck on the left. These two bucks here, this is, as you can see, is the 10th of January. Now this buck, the two of them are going to spin here and bounce off and watch what happens here. This is why they call them antlers and not horns. Boom, boom, boom. Whoa, holy smoke. Look at there, folks. We got a buck with no antlers. I'll slow that up for you in slow motion. Let's watch that. He shakes his head and off comes both antlers right here. Watch this. Whoop, there they go. There's the antlers. A 180 type mule deer, nice heavy buck. They went and picked these antlers up. A real rare piece of footage. Look at that, the pedestals. You can still see blood on the pedestal. Just a really unbelievable piece of footage. Coming up, we're going with my son Guy into southern Wyoming to hunt trophy mule deer and watch him take a good 160, 170 mule deer. You don't want to miss this hunt. Several years ago, my oldest son Guy came out and hunted mule deer with me and Wendell in southwestern Wyoming. Uh, he's never taken a good mule deer, and this is an opportunity for him. This spatcher group of mule deer bucks, there's a couple of them over 27 inches, go over a ridge and go down into this pocket right here of Quakers and lay down for the day. Uh, Guy and I and Wendell slip over there. We're in hopes of getting Guy up on one of the bigger bucks and getting him an opportunity to take a trophy mule deer. When we got over there, the bucks had split up and out the top came this 27-incher with some littler bucks. It gave Guy an opportunity at about a 300-yard shot right here. Oh, 
he missed. But he'll get another chance right here. The buck will hmm. stop right up here. Top of his back. It's the last one. He hit the buck, and the buck runs down the hill and out of my camera view and collapses in just above Quaker Patch here. Guy made a, a real good shot, the second shot, and got this nice trophy mule deer. It's 27 inches wide and scores in the 160s. The best buck guys taken to date. Congratulations, guy. The next evening, we catch up to my hunting partner, Mike Wick, who's from Wisconsin. We've got him up on a real nice 30-inch trophy mule deer. Now, let me tell you something. The year before, I filmed that buck in the same area. This is what he looked like the year before. Good 30-inch wide, high back tang mule deer. Let me tell you a secret here. If nobody bothers these trophy mule deer, like if they don't get run out of the country or winter kill, or if some hunter doesn't kill him, he will come back year after year to the same general area. And over the top of this ridge is this Quaker patch, and that's where we found him the next year, just feeding right in this Quaker patch. When he sees us, he just freezes, thinks he's hid, and now let's watch Mike Wick slip up and try to take this trophy right mule there. there. Get right up there. Right there. Right on it. Oh, I hit something. He went down. He's dead. I thought he's, I think he's down right there. Ask Wendell. Did you get him? Oh, Mike made a great shot on the buck, broke him down in the back, and he didn't even move. Uh, it's, uh, the buck is uh, 30 inches wide. He looks just about like he did the year before. A real nice trophy mule deer. Mike has taken some real dandy mule deer and whitetail, but you know, getting a trophy like this is a real pleasure when you're hunting, and uh, Mike is really satisfied with this nice trophy mule deer. Congratulations, Mike. Let's look at another big trophy mule deer. This is a hornbeck buck. He is 40 inches wide. Now watch this. He is so wide, he hits the trees as he walks. Now the Hornbeck brothers have hunted this buck for over five years and never were able to take him. He was found on public land during the hunting season. You know, they took a lot of photographs of him over the years. And in my book, I have five years of photographs showing his antler development. This is the last year of his life right here. Just a great big trophy mule deer. This is what he looked like the year before. He's about 38 inches wide here. But you know, the last year right here, he's over 40 inches and is over a 240 non-typical mule deer. You know, guys, there's still bucks like this out there, but they're not dumb. Like I said, the Hornbeck brothers hunted this buck for five years, and you know, during the hunting season, they only saw him once. You don't get to be seven or eight or nine years old like these old bucks do without being pretty smart. You know, Popeye, was a rare case, but believe it or not, I have several other bucks that I have documented over two, three, or four years of their life, big, nice trophy mule deer, and in future shows, we'll kind of slip them in and give you an idea of what a good trophy buck will do year after year. I hope you enjoyed the Eastman's Hunting Journal, and hope to see you next time. You know, this is uh, the last time I saw Popeye. He winter killed this winter, but it's a fitting tribute to a big super mule deer that outwitted hunters for over 10 years on public land. So long, Popeye. See you in my dreams.